may recall in the second half of 2011, ADSO requested support. And the support they requested was for people to write to their local member, to their ministers, to the senators, even to the prime minister if they wished. It was a fantastic response. And to those who, who contributed, I know I can pass on the thanks of the ADSO management team. More recently though, there's been an interesting twist because some of those people have been receiving a letter from their minister, local member. And the letters are very short, but in it they attach a so-called fact sheet, clearly identifiable coming from this Commonwealth government. But that's where it ends. There's no signature block. There's no identifying department. There's no month. And yet this fact sheet, which really I call a disinformation sheet, tries to sway the argument to justify the government's action or inaction, as the case may be, on a number of important issues. Twelve points. I would say the first half a dozen are nothing but red herrings. Irrelevant claims, assertions that are nowhere near factual and are not directly applicable to what we're about. And that is fixing the indexation fallacy that is eroding the pensioners of the MSBS, DFRDB and DFRB schemes. Good heavens, why was this written? What a load of rubbish. All we've said is give us what we signed up for. Give to the service man and woman their defined benefit entitlements and maintain that defined benefit at the index rate as you promised. Why have indexation of any sort if you don't in intend to maintain that standard? A mouthful. But if the CPI was so darn good and so fair, then why did the pensioners and beneficiaries index the living cost index? Why was that brought about? Because it didn't maintain purchasing power. Living standards were being eroded and you had some wonderful scenes of, of uh, female uh, pensioners in Melbourne taking off certain parts of their outer garments to get the message across. But the government quickly got it. And they quickly came up with a new index to make sure that they weren't being driven into poverty. And that's exactly what we're after here. What a load of hogwash. Can you believe what they've written? This is supposed to be called a fact sheet. That is nothing like what we've asked for, and it's not what's occurring. We are not asking for anything retrospective, we're asking for restoration. Restoration of an entitlement that's been eroded away because of a changed indexation scheme that was introduced 20 years after DFRDB was brought in. And yet to this day, even under MSBS, there's the government telling the troops who are now signing on the dotted line that we'll maintain the purchasing power of, of the value of your dollar in 2011 right out to 2028. Nonsense. I think we finally, in that last dot point, get to why the, the government has a problem with this campaign by ADSO to bring fairness into their superannuation. It's all about the budget. Isn't it amazing though? Think back to the, uh, near the end of November in 2011, just a couple of months ago, where suddenly the government realised they were going to struggle to bring the, the budget into surplus for the next financial year, and that has a political imperative. Suddenly, overnight, they found a couple billion dollars. You know what we're asking for here? Uh, ADSO, as you know, is estimated about 20 for the first year, 21 for the second, 22 for the third sort of figure. Overall, about 90 million. The mineral resources, rent tax, the carbon tax, uh, the future fund. There's endless ways the government could solve this right now and fix indexation for everyone. Not just the DFRB, not just the DFRDB, not just the MSBS, 
for those on the invalidity pension as well. Everyone can be fixed right now with a stroke of the pen. Get on with the government and stop messing around and stop issuing false fact sheets.